Hello, everyone. I'm White Cow. Nice to meet you. Today, we will install VirtualBox and Vagrant in a CUI environment and actually create a virtual machine. This method is not found anywhere else. So how about everyone trying it? Since it extensively uses Linux, networking, and virtual environment technologies, I am confident it will definitely be educational. Even with the presence of generative artificial intelligence, without knowledge, one cannot obtain high-quality answers. Furthermore, since one cannot point out incorrect answers from artificial intelligence, in any case, it is always better to continue learning. Then, let's get started. First, we will install VirtualBox. The method of installation is just copying and pasting what is written on the official site. For those who want to understand the meaning of the commands, detailed explanations are provided in the links in the video description, so please refer to them. From here, we will work by SSH connecting to Ubuntu. The content is lengthy, so please copy and paste it. If you do not add this, version 6 of VirtualBox will be installed. I took this step in order to install the latest version 7. Download the public key for the VirtualBox app repository and register it as a trusted key in the system. We are now ready to install VirtualBox. Update the package list and then proceed with the installation. This process will take some time. It is a computer from 10 years ago, but setting up the music server we are attempting is possible. The installation is complete, so I will check the version. Next, we will install Vagrant. Vagrant is a tool that works well with VirtualBox and simplifies the setup and management of virtual machines. We will also install this by referring to the official page. Copy and paste the commands found under the Ubuntu tab. We will download and add the public key. Next, we will add the apt repository. We will update the package list and install Vagrant. The installation is complete, so I will check the version of Vagrant. It has been successfully installed. Let's actually start up the virtual machine. We will search for Ubuntu on Vagrant Cloud. There are pre-built options available, such as WordPress and databases allowing for immediate testing. You can create the Vagrant file on an actual machine, or you can copy and paste the command from the new tab. In the video, we will copy and paste the command found in the new tab. For clarity, I will create an appropriate directory and copy and paste the command in that directory. After executing the command, a Vagrant file will be created. Based on the contents of the Vagrant file, we can create a virtual machine. We will start the virtual machine. When you use Vagrant to launch a VirtualBox virtual machine, there are several convenient commands available. We will check the state of the virtual machine. Since the virtual machine has started, let's try connecting to it via SSH. Let's check the memory capacity and device status being used in the virtual machine. We confirm that the virtual machine has 2GB of memory and there is no audio source in the device. 
It seems that the lack of an audio source can occur in CUI Ubuntu servers, possibly due to infrequent use. Therefore, we will edit the Vagrant file to add an audio source. We will exit the virtual machine and return to the host machine. Initially, we started with the default settings, but now we can edit and customize them. We will increase the memory capacity to 4 GB and configure the audio source. Since we have changed the file content, we will restart the virtual machine. We will connect to the virtual machine via SSH to check the changes. The memory capacity has been adjusted to the specified sizes intended. The virtual audio device has also been added. To check if sound is produced, we will install ALSA. ALSA is an architecture for sound card drivers for Linux systems. Installing ALSA enables you to use several convenient command line tools for managing the system. We will use a play command to verify if the audio output is functioning correctly. When using the apply command, normally the sound card cannot be found by regular user, but it is recognized when using sudo. The same applies to commands for adjusting the settings of the ALSA mixer. We will later install a tool to configure on a per user basis. So we will address this issue now. First, we will display the list of groups. Since the audio group exists, we will add the current user to this group. When checking if the user has been added to the group, it appears they have not been added yet. After executing the command, a system reboot or the user logging out and logging back in is necessary to enable the changes. I have confirmed that the user has been added to the group. Now, it should appear without using sudo. Since the virtual environment is ready, we will install MPD. MPD is a music player used in many Unix-based operating systems, including Linux. The main feature of MPD is that it functions as a server running in the background, which users can control using client programs. You can learn about settings for the virtual machine to communicate with the outside. Therefore, we will review and modify the Vagrant file and network to change the virtual environment. The installation of MPD is now complete. We will check the status of MPD. It appears that it is not running after installation. We will start it. Also, it does not start automatically after a system reboot, so we will configure that as well. It has now started. Next, we will configure MPD. After confirming the directory where the music files are placed, we will make the necessary entries for audio output.
This is based on the output from the apply command. Since the file has been edited, we will restart MPD. We will exit the virtual machine and return to the host machine. Now that we know the directory for storing music files within the virtual machine, we will set up a synchronized folder. Using this feature, you can share files between the guest OS running on VirtualBox and the host OS. On the host, music files are placed in a directory named music. We will edit the Vagrant file to add the settings for the synchronized folder. Just like before, we will restart the virtual machine. To be sure, we will SSH connect to the virtual machine to check if the host files are there. Since we can confirm the files, they are being shared with the host. Let's take a moment to learn a bit about the network between the host and the guest. First, we will check the IP address of the host. This is important. A different address from the host's IP address is displayed and from the virtual machine's perspective, it appears as though the connection is coming from this IP address. It is as a bit complex to explain in words, but I will try. In essence, the IP address 10, 0, 2, 2 is the internal IP address of the host machine in net mode, and it is different from the host machine's external network IP address. This is a virtual address for managing communication between the virtual machine and the host machine. Keeping this knowledge in mind, we will configure the virtual machine to be accessible from the outside. We will add entries to the MPD configuration file to allow connections from external sources. By default, it is set to deny access from anyone other than itself. Additionally, we will modify the Vagrant file on the host. We will set up port forwarding between the host and the virtual machine. MPD uses port 6600. Host to guest port forwarding is one of the network settings used in virtualized environments. We will set up port forwarding between the host and the virtual machine. Through this setting, network traffic can be transferred from a specific port on the host machine to a specific port on the guest machine. To apply this setting, we will restart the virtual machine. Something that is often forgotten, no matter how many times it is done, is a firewall. To allow connections from the client, we will open this port. We are finally ready to connect. From the client, we will enter the IP address of the host machine. To test the operation, it is MLP, an app that serves as an MPD client. 
the music file names on the server are now displayed. Indeed, the connection is complete, and the music is playing. However, the sound is coming from the server side. In other words, it is like using a remote control to operate the host machine. So now, we will connect from the client and set it up, so that the sound comes from the client. There are two possible approaches. This method is used for one Pulse Audio server to connect to another Pulse Audio server and transmit the audio stream. Another method involves the MPD server directly connecting to the client's Pulse Audio server to transfer audio. Both methods require installing Pulse Audio on both the server and the client. In this video, we will configure using the latter method. We will install Pulse Audio and ALSA on the host. We already installed ALSA on the virtual machine earlier, but to use it more conveniently, we have decided to install ALSA on the host as well. Now, we will remove the audio source setting in the Vagrant file. This is because a virtual machine has a setting to use the host system's Pulse Audio server as the audio source. I will explain this in more detail later. To make the sound come out of the client, a little configuration is also necessary on the virtual machine. We will also install Pulse Audio within the virtual machine. We will set up environmental variables so that the virtual machine can use the host audio source. The content to be written will be shown in the video. We will also add this to the MPD configuration file. The content written earlier should be treated as a comment or deleted. We will add new entries specifically for Pulse Audio. Since we have edited the Vagrant file, we will exit the virtual machine and restart it. I forgot earlier, but now we will check the status of Pulse Audio on the host. It is not running. We will start it. It seems that it cannot be started. As mentioned earlier, the command to check the status of Pulse Audio is set and operates on a per user basis, which is why this is happening. Since it is not working well, I will restart the computer. I have just restarted it. After restarting, it worked fine. We will also start the virtual machine. With this, the setup of the server running on the virtual machine is complete. We will now start setting up the client. Here, we will set up the client using Ubuntu Desktop as an example. Let's confirm the IP address of the client. To produce sound on the client, it is necessary to install Pulse Audio. Let me explain a bit about Pulse Audio. Pulse Audio receives sound streams from various audio applications and manages them. It refers to software that outputs these streams to the appropriate audio devices, such as speakers or headphones. Additionally, it has the following characteristics. Pulse audio is not recommended to be used by the root user. In fact, commands are restricted when executed as root. It is good to remember that Pulse audio is configured and operates on a per user basis. On Ubuntu Desktop, 
Pulse Audio is already installed, so we will edit the configuration file. I will explain the content of the edits and their meaning shortly. We need these settings because we want to allow external connections to the Pulse Audio server on the client machine. In the current example, the client is in Ubuntu Desktop. Ubuntu Desktop is initially set up with the firewall disabled. But if you have enabled it, make sure to allow the port number mentioned in the video. To apply the changes in the file, we will restart Pulse Audio. We will check to ensure that Pulse Audio is running correctly. Recall that we previously specified the port number. We will check if it is in a listening state. The client setup is now complete. We will install a playback tool and perform a functionality check. This music playback tool allows you to specify the connection destination. The connection destination is the IP address of the physical machine running the virtual machine. Since we have the opportunity, we will also set it up to be accessible from Windows. The change involves modifying the IP address in the MPD configuration file within the virtual machine to the IP address of the Windows machine. In this video, we use VirtualBox on Windows to listen to music. We will create a lightweight, CUI-based Ubuntu virtual machine and pre-install Pulse Audio and Playback software. In the Pulse Audio settings, we will use the same configurations previously introduced for the Ubuntu desktop. As of 2023, many Linux distributions are transitioning from Pulse Audio to Pipewire. Pipewire is a new multimedia framework aimed at integrating audio and video processing. Designed as an alternative to Pulse Audio, it also caters to low latency audio processing and professional audio needs. That is all for today. Thank you for watching.